welcome to Taste Different Gaming Appetizers. What are we talking about this time? Well, Sony apparently is really concerned about Microsoft Xbox's strategy following the Activision Blizzard buyout. So, you know, we did have Insomniac got leaked, uh, which revealed a bunch of Sony and, and Insomniac internal documentation. Uh, leaks slides have revealed that Sony's internal concern at competitor Microsoft's emerging strategy following its $69 billion acquisition of Activision Blizzard. Sony described the buyout, which brings the likes of Call of Duty, World of Warcraft, Candy Crush, uh, within Xbox as the leapfrog. It goes on to say that Microsoft is now positioned to leapfrog our current pillars. Sony points out the benefits of the acquisition, which arms Microsoft with strong live service games, which Sony has been trying to get into, but has failed miserably at, uh, which a lot has failed miserably at, but (laughs) uh, scale and mobile. Again, they have King, which is one of the biggest mobile developers out there. So now Microsoft has King and, and a ready-made PC storefront in battle.net. So now, you know, Microsoft, since they own Activision Blizzard, they're going to have that Battle.net storefront on the PC, right? Besides Microsoft, the Xbox storefront, which is not a good storefront. So, you know, Blizzard.net's got a, a it's, it's better than the Microsoft, the Microsoft storefront. They've never been good at making a storefront worth a shit. But uh, it also knows Microsoft is building its own mobile app store to challenge Apple's App Store and Google's Play Store. They're going to try this again. We tried this, Microsoft. Just give that dream up. You tried it. You had Windows phones, and now we don't have Windows phones. <laughs> and we don't have Windows phones for a good reason. No one wanted to put their crap on your store, and it ain't going to change. But what about the Zune? Well, that was uh, that was the uh, uh, iPod, or, uh, uh, iPod, right? That was uh, Microsoft. I wish I, lo- I had a Zune. I loved my Zune. But still... <laughs> It still didn't take off, um, you know, and we like, again, we had Windows phones, but that the, 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 the thing about the, the store on the Windows um, phones was there was nothing on it, right? Every, all the apps and everything were on Apple uh, App Store and Google App Store, like no, no, hardly any developers made apps for Microsoft's App Store. So I don't know why they would want to try to do that again. Uh, so apparently Phil Spencer, apparently he's been spoken about about it multiple times in the past. So I guess he really loved the Microsoft uh, app store. Uh, Sony goes on to express concerns about Call of Duty's threat coming in 2027 in order to appease antitrust regulators. Microsoft signed a deal with Sony to keep Call of Duty on PlayStation. And according to these internal document, that deal ends in 2027. Sony predicts a massive threat to its subscription service, PlayStation Plus, which amounts to $1.5 billion in annual revenue. There's a day and date threat to which Microsoft points to launch Activision Blizzard games straight into its rival subscription service Game Pass. Microsoft has said it won't release the likes of Call of Duty, Modern Warfare 3 and Diablo 4 into Game Pass until 2024, which we're almost there. But it seems likely next year's Call of Duty game, reportedly uh, Black Ops Gulf War, will launch straight onto Game Pass. And that makes perfect sense, right? I mean, you own it. You're going to pop those right into Game Pass. And that's going to be a huge advantage for Microsoft. When Call of Duty and Diablo and all these Blizzard games go straight into Game Pass and Activision games go straight into Game Pass, whether you got an Xbox or just a PC that you play them on, that's going to be a huge boon to those individuals who pick up Call of Duty every year, right? If they have the Xbox... Game Pass subscription. They don't have to go buy Call of Duty. Now they're just going to have it, right? They're going to be able to play the next alliteration of Call of Duty without having to go out and purchase a $70 copy at the store. In the document, Sony admitted its pillars are already dated behind the competition and lamented the elusive perfect game subscription. The exception of free best in class video game creates an unobtainable model said Sony, with subscription revenue not enough to cover investment. A unified console, PC, and mobile experience doesn't exist, Sony says, due to diversity in form factors and computer power. Sony's central approach, it said, remains the premium sales model. 
The internal documents shine a light on the con- contrasting strategies between Microsoft and Sony. Microsoft have launched its games day and date across PC and Xbox and straight into Game Pass, whereas Sony launched its games first on PlayStation, then sometimes years later on PC, and then potentially on PS Plus. Uh, my, uh, PlayStation boss's Jim Ryan said in June of 2023 that video game publishers do not like Xbox Game Pass. During his pre-recorded testimony for an uh, for a hearing between the uh, Federal Trade Commission, the FTC, Microsoft, Ryan claimed publishers do not like Microsoft's uh, video game subscription service because it is value destructive. He said, I talked to all publishers and they uh, anonymously do not like Game Pass because of its value destruction. Just before that, Ryan claimed Game Pass is unprofitable for Microsoft. The Game Pass business model appears to have some challenges and Microsoft appears to be losing a lot of money on it, Ryan said. These comments came before Microsoft bought Activision Blizzard, though. And now the game has changed. For Sony, it seems the game has changed significantly. So for Sony, it seems like they're like, that eh, ain't working out for them. And then they buy Activision Blizzard and like, ah. Oh. Damn it! <laughs> you know, that's pretty much that's pretty much how that went, right? Um, so, you know, we talked about um, Sony's got PlayStation Plus. The 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 hack that just happened really hurt Sony, or could potentially hurt Sony, right? Uh, we don't know the out uh, if that will hurt them in the outcome. But Sony has spent big on studio buy about, uh, buyouts as part of its live service drive. We talked about that before how Sony's been trying to get into live service, but it hasn't gone so well for them. Uh, you know, they bought Bungie and Bungie with destiny Two. destiny two is, you know, we've heard rumblings. Destiny two is struggling hard, um, to stay afloat. And so we don't know what's going to happen with that. Not to say that Bungie's going to go away, but, uh, you know, Sony might come in and put the, put the, put the brakes on what Bungie is doing. Right. Um, as far as that goes, uh, you know, uh, Haven Studios and Firewalker, uh, Firewalk Studios, we talked about those studios being shut down after Sony had accompanied them. So, uh, you know, and Sony's tried to get into that battle royale and to the live service market and various other things. And they just, is there single player games? Top notch. But when Sony tries to get into anything else, they seem to fail flat on their face with it. I'm not sure why, right? I just don't know. They just, like I said, single player exclusive games that they make, just the best in the biz. But when it comes to anything else they try to develop, uh, it just doesn't work out for them. So, but I could see that, you know, when we talked in a previous video about how Microsoft has, um, you know, spread themselves out. And, and you know, with that, um, That's what, you know, that's kind of what we're seeing with the Activision Blizzard. That's just going to propel Game Pass and they're and they're spreading uh, even more. Right. Because now that they have Activision Blizzard, they've spread themselves even further into the PC space and now into the mobile space, into the live market space, into the MMO space. They own now one of the biggest MMOs. That's still one of the biggest MMOs in the freaking world, which is World of Warcraft. Uh, I, you can say what you will about the game or the fact that the game is like a hundred years old now, but it's probably still the most played MMO that exists to this day. Right. At least in the top, if not the top. Um, so, you know, again, Microsoft strategy is kind of like spread itself like a virus all over the place where Sony's is, is a great, is a great strategy, but the strategy, the strategy might be becoming dated, right? Where they're, they're, they're like, uh, you know, Sony's in a bubble. They develop things for this bubble. They make things for this bubble. Everything is contained into the bubble and everything within the bubble is great, but the bubble never expands, right? The bubble doesn't grow and, and, and reach out to other forms and other things. It's just, everything is contained, but that contained bubble is perfect. Um, the only problem is, is, that bubble's going to pop, right? <laughs> One of these days. And then Sony, I think, sees that and sees that they need to start kind of getting with the times, right? Is, you know, 
I think even Nintendo kind of saw that, saw those deer in the headlights a little bit sooner than Sony had, right? They tried to keep that tried and true console space. And, and even though Sony is number one, I'm not taking that away from them or anything like that, but I think they see the future and it's not necessarily like, oh my God, we're going to lose or we're going to, you know, no, not be number one or anything like that. I think it's just Sony's just looking at it going, you know what? We need to come up with the strategy to be more competitive in the future because Microsoft is kind of getting a leg up with things. This is kind of with their strategy. They're, they're playing the long game and the long game is working out for them. It's starting there, you know, the, their comeuppance are starting to, to come up for, uh, for uh, Microsoft. Whereas <coughs> Sony's kind of seeing the writing on the wall and going, we need to kind of do that ourselves. I feel like, right. We need to start looking at these things. We kind of blew these things off. Like, ah, eh, we're not worried about them, but reality is maybe we should be worried about these things and think about what we need to do about to combat these uh, growths. We can't let Microsoft go unchecked basically, because if we do, it could spell not necessarily disaster, but I mean, it could be bad for a certain portion of the business that we want to, you know, hold or tie into or anything like that. Right. We might not be able to get our foothold in certain businesses if we let Microsoft just do its own thing. Right. If we're not, if we're going to sit there as Sony and be like, ah, we're not worried about them and they're just spreading all over the place. And all of a sudden Sony looks around and there's like Microsoft's everywhere. Right. <laughs> and they're like, uh, what happened to this thing? It's like the uh, zombie plague. They're like, ah, it's just a few zombies. The next thing you know, the entire town is uh, turned into zombies. Right. We see it all the time. We see it all the time. Uh, what do you think about it, though, this, Shane? Uh, I, I said it in a previous video. Sony won their console war. I mean, they won it. I mean, it's plain and simple. I sound terrible right now, don't I? Um, Sony's won the console war. What they're worried about is Microsoft winning the game war. So Microsoft has played a different game than Sony, just like Nintendo has played a get different game against both of them. Everybody is doing their own thing right now. Now, Microsoft started uh, Game Pass. Sony was like, eh, that's stupid. It ain't never going to work. And by the way, Jim Ryan can suck a dirty butt because uh, there's been plenty of developers that have uh, praised Game Pass. Lots of P developers have praised Game Pass just here recently. So, Shut up, Jim Ryan. Um, now that's not to say all developers like it. You know, I obviously there's going to be some of like, oh, no way. But you know, I don't know the ins and outs of Game Pass, of getting games on there, what the financial benefits and all that stuff weigh out to. I don't, but Sony, Sony pushed that off previously and then they realized it's, it's something gamers want. Gamers, not the developers, but gamers. And it's working really well for Microsoft, even though Game Pass probably, uh, it hits highs, it hits lows because there's, you know, like we did at the beginning of Game Pass was, you know, we got it, we canceled it, we got it, we canceled it. And now we're continuous subscribers. Uh, I have, you know, I have the $16 plan. It gets me Game Pass Ultimate. So do you, so does Pat, so do my kids. Um, because it's a really good deal. Microsoft has put themselves with those decisions like that, put themselves in different positions in the gaming market and as a whole, not just as in the consoles, but as a whole that Sony is not playing on. Sony kind of dips into the PC market uh, a year or so after games come out on their console, but they, they, they resell it at a full price, which is a lot of crap. Um, but Microsoft, uh, you know, they're out there, they're spreading their legs like, you know, like a sea pirate. You know, they're just, they're, they're out there and they want to be out there. They want to be on your PC. They want to be on your phone. They want to be on your Xbox. They they want to be on your uh, your TV, the Samsung, when they're uh, is doing a partnership with Microsoft. And so Microsoft is playing the gaming, the the gaming war now. Microsoft gave up on consoles. That's not to say they're going to stop making consoles because I, 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 I love my Series X. I think the console and I think the controllers are best in the business right now. Uh, 
Uh, that's not to say anything disparaging about Nintendo or Sony by any means. I, I love my PlayStation. I love my Nintendo, but I, I like the controller for the Xbox. And I like the console for the Xbox just better. And that's, that's not about games. That's just about the, the, you know, the equipment. Uh, Microsoft should make Sony a little nervous when it comes to the gaming atmosphere because Microsoft has basically poised themselves to be one of the biggest uh, uh, publishers and developers on the market. You know, with some of the, you know, like you said, with World of Warcraft, I believe they're right now, they're the, you know, they're off and on number one, number two MM, uh, MMORPGs right now. You know, they kind of bounce back and forth and they have been for decade now. Uh, Microsoft ain't going to blow that kind of money without without the expectation of uh, payback. <laughs> uh, when they bought uh, Mojang Minecraft, you know, I can't remember what they spent on it, but now they rake in billions off of Minecraft. And that's not because they put it on, they put it exclusively on Xbox. They put it everywhere. It's everywhere. It's on Sony. It's on Nintendo. It's on your phone. It's on your freaking television. Hell, these damn new cars probably got it on those screens. You know, I mean, it's everywhere. Sony is, should be scared of some of these decisions because it could, it could theoretically could make a turnaround for the console market. Probably not, but it could. Because if that's where the games are at, that's where you want to be. Sony has where the games are at right now. As far as the single-player exclusives, nobody can really touch Sony. Except for maybe Steam. Steam has some really amazing stuff that Nick has kind of got me into lately. Um, but I'm, not a con- I'm, not, I'm a console guy. I'm not a PC guy. Uh, but I think, I think Sony has a right to be worried. I think they should. Uh, but not in the console market. I really don't think they have to worry. I don't. I think uh, Sony has has earned the right to be the number one console maker because they have made, uh, even though they make decisions I do not like as a gamer, they have made a lot of good decisions and they bought the right companies. They put out the right games. Uh, they'll never, I don't think Sony will ever hit the the live market right i don't think i don't i don't think that's a that's a possibility for sony or microsoft really to make a live service game now granted they just bought a bunch of live service games already there so those don't count in my book uh you know that'd be like nintendo trying to make a service game you know so i don't see it happening but I, I i'm glad to see sony kind of fretting about things because that's going to make them more in that's going to make them more inventive. That's going to make them try harder to hit certain peaks, be it uh, the console market, be it, the, you know, jumping more into PC mobile. Uh, you know, there, there's a big market for mobile. I don't play mobile unless I'm pooping. I don't touch my phone for a game. Um, the PC market is beyond the console market, you know, leaps and bounds so you know sony may have 117 million trillion playstations out there but they won't ever beat pcs everybody's got a pc so but what nintendo and sony and microsoft need to do is just quit fighting with each other and just make games that's that's really what to me what it comes down to make me some games so but that's all I got because I really I sound like crap right now. My throat is starting to hurt, <laughs> so so I'm getting a getting a cold or something right before Christmas. So yay me! Woo! Yeah, I'd say the most successful, which is not saying a whole lot, but it is the most successful Microsoft Live service would probably be Halo Infinite uh, multiplayer. It, you know, it doesn't got the numbers that like Call of Duty and stuff does, but it still has a healthy player base, and there's still a lot of people that play. Uh, Halo Infinite multiplayer, especially be, lately with I'll like season honest. five. I think they were saying there was a big yeah. resurgence of gamers coming in to play it. I I always forget about Halo anymore because it used to be Halo was the 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 shiznes, and now I don't even think about Halo. That's that's sad because Halo was 
was amazing, you know, multiplayer and all that. But, you know, I'm glad it's making a comeback because it's a it's a solid series. Even even at its worst, the multiplayer has always been solid. So Yeah, because Halo multiplayer or Halo the multiplayer infinite is on Steam. You know, it's not just on Microsoft. And on Steam, looking at the Steam charts, uh, I think there was about what did I see? It was about seven thousand a little over seven thousand players. Um on let's see what did it say on the steam chart so there's 7491 players playing it right now as we're talking um the 24 hour peak was 7661 so you know it seems to be doing this but it seems to stay around that 7000 between 2 and 7000 as it's going along here so it uh it seems to like do this a probably bit of a roller probably coaster. it is a bit of a roller coaster seems to spike up around probably around the seasons and stuff but i know season five i think which is the last season that just came out here i want to say had really like i don't know what they did in season five but apparently that brought a lot of people back into halo multiplayer um uh, again i don't know sure what they, they did brought for it, back but... a bunch of uh classic maps uh more classic maps like blood yeah and i think and a classic that. mode too right i thought i read something like a classic uh, mode was like brought back uh we'll which brought a lot of people in, in. there sometime yeah and the multiplayer was fun but i think that's been the most successful live service that's come from microsoft right um, but yeah, I, I, I agree with you. I don't think Sony needs to worry about consoles. Right. And I don't think Sony needs to necessarily worry about Microsoft in that form or fashion. Right. I think Sony's still going to be number one. I think Sony's just looking at this going, maybe we should be a little bit less strict on our console and be, and kind of do what Microsoft is doing, kind of spread ourselves out a bit because we're kind of condensing ourselves into one you know, one thing when Microsoft is putting itself everywhere, right? And everybody can play everything everywhere. And maybe we should do the same thing or at least start moving in that direction a little bit more and kind of spreading ourselves out. Um, just for, because again, if you let Microsoft go unchecked in these areas, Microsoft will dominate these areas and you, you will have your little, little island with the PlayStation on it. But everything else will be owned by Microsoft, right? And Microsoft will dominate the entire rest of the market. So I think Sony's is looking at that going, you know what? We need to sp- spread our influence uh, into these other areas. Uh, so that way, so, so that way, Microsoft doesn't just completely overtake all these markets. So, yeah, I don't think, uh, <clears throat> I don't think more purchases should be done for well, either one. Uh, But especially Sony, I don't think Sony needs to make more purchases. I think they need to, they just need to create more output for their games. They just need more games out there. Biggest problem I have with Sony is uh, right now, everybody's done their year in review for the games, Nintendo, Sony, Microsoft, Steam. You can see how many games you've played, uh, how many hours and so on and so forth. Nintendo, I think I had eight. Uh, for the year, one of them was my kids. I know, so actually, two of them was probably my kids. Um, I played Nintendo for exclusives. That's it. Sony, it's the same thing. I play for exclusives. I only play like four or five a year on on Sony's platforms. Microsoft, I play everything on the Xbox. Uh, you know, and I think PC, I had like twelve or fifteen, something like that. So, if Sony produced more you know granted you can't play that damn many games in a year so they can't put out too many first party games but but if they put out a few more you know top notchers like they they make now that's going to be a benefit but i think they need to get to i think they need to get them out to uh uh pc sooner uh give themselves you know instead of a couple years a year do it six months you know, then I wouldn't feel so bad about them charging 70 bucks for a, <clears throat> for a game that's been out for two years. You know, their game came out six months ago. They put it on PC. You know, it's another 70 bucks. I would feel a little more okay with that. So, but right. you know, my, Sony I think doesn't they have should. to worry because they've won the console war, like you said. 
Right. You know, even if they are on that island, they're going to have a hundred million goddamn people on that island with them. Oh yeah, that's uh, that, that they're going to be fine. Yeah, I think they should do day and date with the PC for their time. I, I would agree, except for Sony will never do that. Sony oh, will no. never do that. But I think it would benefit them more to do that. Um, truthfully, because oh, yeah. like, like you know, people that are diehard PC players. If they're a diehard PC player, like that's all they play, they're not going to go buy a PlayStation just to play that, right? They're going to wait for the game to come out on, on PC. So if you just do it day and date, then you're going to get just more sales out of that, right? You're not going to convince those people to, to go buy a PlayStation, I feel like. Um, you're just, they're just going to wait. <clears throat> if they're just, you know, those type of people that are diehard, like one thing, right? And there's those people out there that have one console or one PC and that's it, right? And they want to play Spider-Man and they want to play whatever, but they're not going to go buy a PlayStation to do so. They're just going to wait until it eventually comes out to that, to, to the PC. Right. So I think it'd be, it would benefit them because the people that are going to, that want to play it on console, uh, you know, they're going to go buy it, right. They're going to go get the console, uh, regardless if they have a gaming PC or not, it's not going to hurt them. It's not like they give a crap. Um, so, you know, just put it out there in day and date. Like, just do yourself a favor with that. Microsoft does, and Microsoft does, not, uh, you know, puts a lot of their games on uh, on Steam, right? And that's just where you, I mean, so does Sony, but that's just what you do. Don't make your own launcher or anything like that. You know, just put your games directly on Steam and go for it. You don't need to be like Epic. Who? <laughs> they are giving away free games right now. It's Christmas time. <clears throat> I downloaded one. I haven't I haven't come across any of them that made me want to you know, download it. You uh, will download everything just because. Oh, I'll grab them. Well, they're free. free. I'll grab them all. <laughs> got to collect them all. It's like Pokemon. All right. Do you got anything else you want to add to this? I do not. All right. Well, that's it for us. I think, you know, like we said, you know, Sony's not in trouble or anything like that. I think just Sony sees that Microsoft is spreading into areas that they need to and, and they need to you know think of a strategy or think of ways to to put themselves in those positions as well otherwise they're going to let microsoft overtake these different markets and then they're just going to have their one market right which their mar one market's big don't get us wrong but you know i'm sure they would like to spread themselves out into other markets and and to, you know they're they're a business they want to make money and the more money they can make, the better the business is, right? Um, but anyway, let us know down in the comments below what you think. Uh, what do you think of the whole, uh, you know, what Sony is saying here and, and just uh, your thoughts on the whole thing. Uh, but let us know down in the comments. Other than that, thanks for watching, everybody. Make sure you like the video. Make sure you subscribe if you're not already. Help us out. Do us a favor. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell notifications to stay up to date with new videos that you do, you do all the time. And we'll see you next time. See ya.